everyone and welcome to Arirang News. It's Wednesday, October 22nd here in Seoul. I'm Na Hyun Kyung. We begin with the release of one of three American detainees in North Korea. Not many details have come out officially, but what we do know is that Jeffrey Fowl was released on Tuesday and that he appeared to be healthy. Hwang Sung Hee has our top story. Jeffrey Fowl, one of three Americans being held in North Korea, was released Tuesday. Without providing details, the U.S. State Department confirmed that Fowl was flying home on a U.S. Air Force passenger jet and appeared to be in good health. The 56-year-old American was arrested in April for leaving a Bible in his hotel. While Washington welcomed Pyongyang's surprise move, it drew attention to the two remaining U.S. detainees. We think this is a, a positive step, um, but that does not change the fact that we remain concerned about Kenneth Bay and Matthew Miller. Washington thanked the Swedish embassy in Pyongyang for helping arrange Fowl's release. A senior South Korean official with knowledge of the matter said the move does not appear to be an outcome of talks between Washington and Pyongyang. But the prospect of dialogue between the two foes seems to be budding. Speaking at a forum in Washington Tuesday, U.S. Special Envoy for the Six-Party Nuclear Talks, Sidney Seiler, rejected the widespread view that Washington is insisting on preconditions for restarting nuclear talks. Seiler stressed that the Six-Party Dialogue would have to be first and foremost about denuclearization, but added that could be demonstrated by North Korea holding off on its current nuclear activities. The U.S. official said Washington is willing to listen to North Korea's list of demands and complaints to encourage them to make the right decisions. Seiler said, however, that the problem is the North's unwillingness to respond. Hwang Sang-hee, Arirang News. South Korea's foreign and defense chiefs are on their way to Washington for security talks. Foreign Minister Yoon Byung-se and Defense Minister Han Min-gu will hold their so-called 2 plus 2 meeting with the U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry and Secretary of Defense Chuck Hagel. Yes. Now the meeting will take place on Thursday local time and North Korea issues are likely to top the agenda. The two sides are, will also hold their annual security consultative meeting where they are expected to fix the timing and conditions for delaying the transfer of wartime operational control from Washington to Seoul. The transfer was originally slated for the end of next year. And before heading to Washington, Minister Yun held talks with a high-level Japanese official in Seoul. The two did not speak directly about a possible summit between President Park Geun-hye and Prime Minister Shinzo Abe, but an official from Korea's foreign ministry says Japan already knows what it needs to do to make that happen. Kim Hyun-bin has more. South Korea's foreign minister has emphasized to Japan that a satisfactory resolution to the issue of wartime sexual slavery is the key to improving the two countries' strained bilateral ties. Meeting with Japan's top security advisor Shotaro Yachi in Seoul on Tuesday, Yoon byung sae said Korea-Japan relations have been clouded by historical issues. The Japanese official's visit is part of Tokyo's bid to enhance bilateral ties and set up a face-to-face -face meeting between President Park Geun-hye and Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. The Korean government has said President Park could be willing to meet with Abe if Japan takes sincere measures to address the issues of its sexual enslavement of tens of thousands of Korean women in the early 20th century. Before meeting with Yoon, Yachi met with South Korea's National Security Advisor Kim Gwan Jin at the presidential office of Cheong Wade. Kim also called on Japan to resolve Korea's grievances over Tokyo's colonial era atrocities. The two discussed a range of issues, including bilateral relations and their North Korea policies. South Korea has called on Japan to take sincere efforts to end the sex slave issue so that the two nations could start building future-oriented ties next year when they mark the 50th anniversary of normalizing their diplomatic relations. Kim Hyun-bin, Arirang News. Hmm, so whether President Park will sit down with Japan's leader remains to be seen, but a summit that will happen for sure next month is one between President Park and Chinese leader Xi Jinping. The summit will take place on the sidelines of the APEC summit in Beijing in November, and this was confirmed by former Chinese diplomat Tang Xiaoshan on Tuesday while he was meeting with President Park. Next month's meeting will be the fifth time the two leaders are meeting as heads of state. The last bilateral talks were in July when President Xi visited Seoul.
It is still way above the global average, but the growth for the world's second largest economy, China, in the third quarter slowed to its weakest in more than five years. Experts are raising concerns, citing a slowdown in one sector in particular. Connie Kim tells us more. China's third quarter GDP growth rate came to 7.3 percent. And while that's slightly above expectations, it represents the nation's lowest level of growth since the global financial crisis in 2008. In general, the economy has remained stable and actually improved over the first three quarters. But the environment domestically and internationally remains complex and the economy is facing challenges. The slow growth was mainly attributed to its weak property sector. I think property sector is something, uh, you know, uh, worry us quite a lot. Uh, it was a main driver for this current slowdown. Uh, if you look at the unsold housing in first, second and third year cities, uh, they remain quite high. Uh, you know, average sales volume fell by 20 or 30 percent. Property sales revenue dropped nearly 9 percent in the first nine months of 2014 on year. Real estate investment climbed 12.5 percent during the same period, down from 13.2 percent recorded from January to August. Although exports, the main driver of industrial production, surged more than 15 percent in September on year, experts say the weak quarterly figures may indicate a weaker performance in the domestic economy. This in turn could dampen demand for Chinese equities, commodities and currency. To counter, analysts say the Chinese government may be forced to cut its interest rate, especially if the quarterly growth rate slips below 7 percent. Connie Kim, Arirang News. The governor of Korea's central bank, citing dangers of a prolonged economic slowdown, has urged banks and policymakers to step up efforts to stabilize the country's financial system. Lee joo says the world cannot expect robust growth anytime soon as the global focus on improving fiscal health and deleveraging in recent years has led to a fall in consumption. Hwang Ji-hae reports. Low interest rates and an expansionary fiscal policy won't be a quick fix for the Korean economy, and the country must swallow a painful pill of restructuring while doubling efforts to secure stability in the financial system. That was the message delivered by the Bank of Korea Governor Lee Joo-yeol on Wednesday. He told a financial forum that the slowing growth in Eurozone economies and in China will pose major risks to the Korean economy for months and years. China, which takes up about a quarter of Korean exports, posted the lowest growth in more than five years in the third quarter. And he warned a slump in the real estate market and accelerated restructuring will further slow China's growth. To counter the uncertainties from abroad and to prop up growth momentum at home, the central banker said the Korean economy needs bold deregulation and structural reforms. Those measures, he believes, will improve investment sentiment and raise the economy's efficiency and productivity. He also emphasized the importance of financial stability while the U.S. Federal Reserve is tightening its monetary policy. He acknowledged that massive capital outflows could take place in the domestic economy if market expectations mount over an earlier than expected rate hike by the Fed. Hwang Jie, Arirang News. Korean investors have turned bullish on foreign stocks. That's according to the Korea Securities Depository on Wednesday. It says the total amount of direct investment in foreign stocks was 5.7 billion dollars as of Monday, which is nearly double the figure from five years ago. Two-thirds of that total went to the U.S., with most of the rest going to other Asian markets. Analysts say investors are taking their money overseas as the local market has been disappointing, with the benchmark Kospi struggling to break through the 2,000-point barrier in recent months. And shifting gears taking place on the sidelines of the International Telecom Conference currently ongoing in Busan is what's called the World IT Show. It gives people the opportunity to witness the latest IT gadgets and trends up close and personal. Kim Ji-yeon takes us to the scene. 
Fast and smart are the key words for this year's World IT Show. An array of products ranging from healthcare to smart education are on display. Advanced technology is increasingly being utilized to make our everyday lives more convenient. This simulation, for example, helps you pick out what to wear. In order to facilitate this smart trend, one of the country's largest telecommunications operators, KT, says it has commercialized an ultra high speed giga internet service. It's 10 times faster than the current broadband service we have in Korea. Users can download a movie in just 30 seconds. Things change. Like, as you know, the IoT things is, is kind of a big issue in Korea, and cloud service is a big issue. But for the service, the basic, the strong network is, is, is principal for all the network things. So if you don't have like strong background network, they don't have any service. That's why it's very important for us and for our customers. Consultation services are provided for buyers and sellers who have come from all corners of the world. Yeah, well, it's actually my first time in Asia, my first time in Korea, and my first time in a night to show this big. And this important, it's uh, pretty, pretty amazing the stuff you have here. Well, this uh, 3D technology that it's uh, next to us, I couldn't really prove the thing because it's in Korean and I could not follow the steps, but uh, it looks very interesting. The World IT Show is also a chance for local small and mid-sized exporters to fill up their contact books. The Korea-based McKinley company is promoting its smart wireless network that uses a unified infrastructure rather than the current diversified version. This brings down costs by reducing the need for overlapping investment. Kim ji Arirang News, Busan. And one of the hottest trends in the IT sector of late is, of course, wearables. There's another industry report suggesting that the market is going to expand greatly in the coming years with all sorts of sectors, including gaming and healthcare, benefiting a lot. Kwon Soa has our next story. There's been a lot of hype about wearable technology, but for most consumers, it's yet to make the leap to must-have gear. However, market watchers believe it's just a matter of time before the boom begins. Leading professional services network PricewaterhouseCoopers in a recent report forecast sales of some 130 million wearable devices between now and 2018. It says 53 percent of so-called millennials, those between the ages of 18 and 24, are excited about the technology. PWC suggests six industries will see the greatest benefits from the rise in wearables. Entertainment and media companies are expected to be the big winners, as the report says, where there's a screen, there's an opportunity. It might not be a revolutionary new genre, but analysts say it improves what's already there by enhancing the fun factor. This factor plays right into the gaming industry, which will go beyond touchscreens and incorporate other senses into the experience. The healthcare sector is also expected to reap benefits by developing more devices for consumers to monitor themselves. Social media, advertising and retail businesses are also forecast to ride the wearable tech wave for profits. So the forecast seems bright, but the industry does face some obstacles. While the report says one in five U.S. adults already own a wearable device, it also revealed one-third of them didn't use it very often or even at all. Analysts say the biggest challenge the industry faces is convincing consumers their wearable device is something they can't leave home without. Kwon Soa, Arirang News. Korea's high youth unemployment rate may be forcing younger Koreans to resort to unorthodox measures to find work. Seoul's Jungang Daily newspaper reported Wednesday that a growing number of job seekers with college degrees are leaving that fact off of their job applications, listing themselves only as high school graduates. Now, they are doing this, the newspaper says, because they believe their qualifications make it more difficult to get hired. An industry researcher quoted in the piece said employers can view highly educated employees as a burden these days. Korea's youth unemployment rate was at 8.5 percent last month, up nearly one percentage point from the same period last year. 
bringing you the fresh updates from stories breaking in Korea and abroad. We give you a bigger and better picture of the world. Join Na Hyung Young live from Seoul every weekday only on Arirang. Now, the World Health Organization has shared its plan for dealing with the Ebola outbreak in West Africa. That plan includes supplying a serum in the coming weeks. The U.S., in the meantime, has implemented a new travel restriction to contain the spread on its own soil. Connie Lee has the details. A serum made from the blood of patients who have recovered from Ebola could be available in Africa within weeks. According to the World Health Organization, the serum, which would contain Ebola antibodies, would first be sent to Liberia, one of the worst hit nations, to treat new victims of the virus. Marie Paul Kinney of the WHO also said that a vaccine could be ready by this January to combat the outbreak that has already killed more than 4,500 people. This hopeful news comes amid some new restrictions in the United States. The U.S. government announced on Tuesday that starting Wednesday, travelers to the U.S. coming from the nations of Guinea, Liberia and Sierra Leone must fly into one of the five designated airports in the cities of Chicago, Atlanta, Washington, Newark, New Jersey and New York City. All travelers, even U.S. citizens who spend time in any of the Ebola-stricken nations will go through an enhanced screening process for the virus. People in the U.S. seem pleased about the new restrictions. I think that sounds like a good idea because for those five designated airports, they can certainly set up the proper medical facilities. That's how you control it. Those are the people that are coming in. You know where they're coming from, not where they're not coming from. So far, three people have been diagnosed with Ebola on U.S. soil, two of them health care workers. Connie Lee, Arirang News. And over in Hong Kong, vague is how student pro-democracy leaders described their first formal dialogue with Hong Kong government officials on Tuesday. Now, this is a sharp contrast to state leaders' description of the meeting as being constructive. There was no major breakthrough, but officials said they hope to continue the talks to resolve the week's long deadlock. The meeting took place after Hong Kong's chief executive C.Y. Lung offered his first apparent concession. He said the demand for universal suffrage was still off the table, but added that there was room to discuss opening up the formation of the key 1,200-member nominating committee so that it's more representative of the people. The two sides have not yet discussed holding a second round of talks. Acclaimed double amputee sprinter Oscar Pistorius has begun his five-year prison sentence for the shooting death of girlfriend Riva Steenkamp in February last year. He was transported to Pretoria, rather central prison, in an armored police vehicle shortly after sentencing was announced on Tuesday for a culpable homicide or manslaughter. The presiding judge also issued a three-year suspended sentence on a separate firearms charge. Law experts say the 27-year-old track star could be eligible for parole after serving just 10 months behind bars. And moving on to some health news, recent research shows that the use of embryonic stem cells could help treat people suffering from acquired retina disease. Our Polly has more. These are human embryonic stem cells retrieved from fertilized eggs. A Korea-U.S. joint research team split these stem cells into retinal pigmented epithelial cells, which are cells that are responsible for absorbing scattered light and transplanted them into 18 patients with damaged retinas. After three years of observation, the treatment appears to be safe and has restored some sight in 10 patients that had ADM, or age-related macular degeneration vision loss, coming with age. The research shows dominant visual cells have become active due to the newly transplanted stem cells. While embryonic stem cells have the potential to become any other cell in the body, the transplantation process is very complicated. But in this study, there were neither immune rejection responses from the patients nor were there any side effects. The treatment has been jointly developed by the U.S.-based Advanced Cell Technology and Korea's Cha General Hospital's affiliate Cha Biotech.
The team is planning to increase the number of test patients to 100 by the end of this year. Paul Yi, Arirang News. Now, as we were saying earlier, there's no denying that we are living in an era full of advanced technologies. That said, some could claim that it's more important to stop and smell the roses, quite literally, and appreciate nature. Our Im Yun Hee helps us do that. Take a look. The wonders of nature, the hidden jewels of the world. They're becoming all too distant, almost a thing of the past. Brazilian photographer Sebastião Salgado has realized this alarming degradation of our planet and our ecosystems. And for the past 40 years, he's trekked the natural world, capturing images of the beauty that he hopes to preserve. Known for his huge photo documentary projects, Salgado's most recent opus, titled Genesis, takes the audience to a world that's been here since the beginning. This masterpiece is the work of over eight years and over 30 trips, the bulk of which was spent seeking animals, even by hot air balloon. From animals to the everyday lives of indigenous people, Salgado traveled to the far corners of different continents, compiling what he calls his love letter to the planet. And sticking to his favorite black and white style, he produces powerful images of a world untouched by modern times. At the end of the day, Salgado believes his images will spread awareness of issues of the environment and climate change, things that are endangering the sheer existence of the breathtaking wonders he captures in each frame. Immune He, Arirang News. Korea's capital city is bright and nice and sunny today. I'm Michelle Park here with the latest weather update. Uh, the rain has subsided, but this only applies to the regions up north. It's st still quite raining over in the southern regions, but things will clear up by this evening. So it will be a sunny day for most parts of the country, but also windy and a bit cool with highs in the upper teens to the low 20s, depending on where you are. Now, along with some cool afternoon, it's going to get much, much chillier overnight, dropping by an average of about 4 degrees, so make sure you layer up on the clothing oh, when you're heading outside. Now, going over to our temperature readings for today. Seoul will peak at 19 this afternoon, while the southern cities such as Gwangju and Busan will reach up to 21 and 18 degrees. Now, moving over to other regions, Jeju Island will look at 18 as well, while Tokyo and Mankungan will be chilly at 13 degrees. Well, that's all for Korea. Now, here's a look at the weather conditions around the world. And that's all we have for now. More news coming up at 6 p.m. Korea time. Thank you for watching.